bump this up to something like six. Hopefully it's... Oh, they crashed it. <laughs> okay, maybe don't do that. <laughs> don't, uh, they couldn't handle the subdivision. Oh, that sucks. Let's open it up again. I don't know if I save, bro. Okay. Oh my god, I didn't save it. Well, we will do it again. We'll just repeat it. Damn, that sucks. Make sure to save your files and yeah, don't don't bump up your, your subdivision to a higher number that you, you just don't know. It'll crash your computer. All right, let's start again from zero. At least I wasn't too far ahead in the... Uh, that does suck though, because it took a while to model those shells, but we'll just be careful with the modifiers next time. I didn't think it would be that destructive. And we're going to do the same thing that we were attempting before with Crush, which is making a wireframe grid for an existing object. And the idea is that the wireframe sits on top of the object. Making an easy storyboard grid that you can use to plan out your shots and or use in different imaging software like Photoshop. Add this, we added the subdivision. Oh, let's go to the render. We're going to add the wireframe modifier now. And right, we're going to change the material of this wireframe plane by going into the material tab. I'm just going to change this to something like a light blue. And by having a duplicate object of your object that you want your grid on, you can have two different materials so that you can have the grid a different color than the original object. If you were just to apply the wireframe modifier directly to the object, then there's no way to make the color different from the grid from the original plane. Then what we do is hold shift to select both the grid wireframe and the plane have this darker blue to the lighter orange thing is saying okay but you're now pointing to this control p object keeps it parented to that plane so if i move the plane now the wireframe should follow i want the wireframe so big we can adjust the thickness to point something what would it smush zero zero five that's what By having different materials for your objects, you can use the material settings to change the colors for them to stand out from the other objects in the scene. And then we'll just go ahead and apply the same process to our shelf in this scene. Okay. We don't need to do subdivision surface modifier. I think I was only doing that because I knew the plane was only, it only had like four verts. So you don't really need to um, subdivide your object, it took me a while to figure that out because <laughs> it already has a lot of geometry on it. You don't need to do that. You just need to apply the wireframe to it and then change the material fill so that's easier to spot. Okay, that's that. And then the wireframe should have its own color. Let me take this out. Yeah, its own material. Looks pretty good. All right, we come a long way. <laughs> Don't use subdivision surface modifier on objects that have a lot of geometry to them already. There's no need to. I don't know why I was doing that. I think I was trying to get more grids on the object. That's what I was thinking about. But you only really need to use the subdivision, then wireframe idea on the plane. Shift select your grid and your original object to parent them. Now, if I move the shelving set, the wireframe should move with it. Wireframe grid. There we go. We made our simple set with 3D grids for our camera. And now that we have applied our grids, we can quickly experiment with the focal length to play around with the depth of the space in our shots. We go in, pretend I'm like super close to the floor, and then the grid should recede. Uh, sharply because it's wide angle. Things in the big in the front will seem a lot bigger than things farther away.
if I do something like 45, that is like our average kind of eye focal length. So everything seems kind of normal. And if I want to do something like telescoping, like where everything comes becomes more like orthogonal and right angle, I'll do 125. And it feels more like I'm like a photographer with like a telescopic lens. And here's an example of one of the shots I produced using that grid method. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments below and subscribe for more Blender content. Thank you guys for watching. Have a good day. Thank mm -hmm. you.